Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are out in the garden this morning. It is Friday morning. We're gonna start out here and then we're gonna head up to the new house. Josh is already up there already. He took the day off because we have painters coming next Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember. So we have a hard deadline on making sure all of that stuff is wrapped up, the trim and everything's wrapped up and ready to go for the painters. But I wanted to get out here because there's a couple things that need to be harvested in this garden. And this bed is where we harvested the garlic and probably two thirds of it don't have anything in it. And I don't like that for two reasons. One, it's not being productive. And two, that's just a breeding ground for weeds. I did take a little stroll through here just a minute ago and the weeds are out of control. And so I wanna to try to get something in the ground before they completely take over this bed. So let's get right to it. We've got a couple different things I'm gonna put in here, mostly just kale because it's super easy to grow and carrots because my carrots have not been doing very well. Because this, I wanna have these carrots in and out as soon as possible, I decided to choose two varieties that grow relatively quickly. The first one we're gonna do is this carrot here and it is a 55 day to maturity carrot. So that is why I am deciding to go ahead and do this one because that is a short to maturity. And then I'm also gonna do this bolero carrot, this is a hybrid carrot, and this is a 75 day to maturity. So I'm not exactly sure what I will be harvesting for myself, but I at least wanna get something in the ground. And then I have just a bunch of different kinds of kale here. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna sow this and try to maximize our garden productivity. I did go through and pull a few weeds and I found one garlic head that I did not harvest and it's kind of stuck in the ground so I'm having to dig it out here. That did not want to come out of there. And another thing I found over here while I was pulling the garlic and I forgot to show you. Oh, I forgot this one too. Is I found an egg. I planted I think it's hollow. Oh! gross that thing is so fermented that is disgusting so I'm gonna bury that oh my goodness I'm glad that did not crack we're gonna let that just bring nutrients to the soil that could have been a disaster if that exploded fully so this was a tomato bed last year and I planted to, uh, eggs with my tomatoes half of the eggs I planted I crushed up half of them I left whole. I will never leave a whole egg when I plant a tomato because of that reason, it didn't even break down so you're not getting the benefit for the plant. You're supposed to get calcium and nutrients from an egg. And last year, a bunch of them got dug up by some sort of animal or something. And so we're gonna let that just decompose in the ground. And I think I have this bed ready to go. I do wanna show you over here. Do you see all that little bit of green that's down there? That is all the green beans that we planted. These are Blue Lake green beans. I just left the seed packet here so that I would remember what they are. And they are coming up really, really well, very quickly. That's the nice thing about planting in the summer. Plants tend to germinate a whole lot quicker. All right, so let's get to work on planting these carrots. I'm not gonna do anything special when I plant these carrots. I'm just going to kind of smooth out the soil a little bit. Get about halfway to the bed, as far as I can reach. Oh, there's another garlic I forgot. And then I'm going to make a trench. There are 5,000 seeds in this seed packet. These are pelleted seeds, which are so, so much easier to plant. Just 
to do the kale, there's spinach seeds in here too, which this is where I'm going to put the kale on this end here. I have three different varieties of kale. I have blue curls kale, scarlet kale, there's a mole, so I'm going to take the soil that the mole has pulled out from around these beds. I'm just going to put it on top of those kale seeds. Pelleted carrot seeds just means there's a clay coating around the carrot seed, so it makes it easier to plant because it is bigger than just a plain carrot seed. They're really, really small, but when you plant them, you have to water them way more than you would a normal carrot seed because you need that clay coating to dissolve so it can germinate. It is all watered in, and I have to tell you, I feel so much better about having that done. It's always amazing to me how just getting one simple task like that can feel overwhelming sometimes. And then you do it and you're like, oh, what a relief. I was picking some peas for a little snack. And I found a little friend. Let's see if we can find them on the other side. Darn it. We lost him. That's okay. These peas are so good. These are some of the last ones I have left out there. These two beds are a little overwhelming to me. I think I need to carve out some time next week to come out here and do some serious weeding. But what's in here is growing despite the weeds. This has a ton of grass in it. It's, it's pretty sad to say. But look at the size of this onion that's growing even amongst those weeds. It is a good baseball size, which is pretty encouraging. And this bed is full of weeds down there, but things are growing. And I have one, two, three yellow squash that are growing pretty well. They're still pretty small in there, but I have one zucchini plant. I was worried that I didn't have any zucchini plants that were growing. And look at what I just found this morning. First zucchini harvest. I'm gonna set this here. And we're going to harvest a bunch of this basil. Over here is where we have just regular Genevieve basil. And I'm going to pick a bunch of this too. The more you pick basil, the more it'll grow. So you really want to stay on top of it if you want a good harvest. I just ran inside to grab a couple more seeds because my basil plants didn't come up super well over here. I want to get a few more in the ground. We have plenty of time to grow enough basil for a year's worth. So let's get this in the ground. I only have really three basil plants and I have room here if I pull up some of these weeds to plant more. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And as I've been walking around, just walking around looking at different things, different things are popping out at me that I hadn't seen before. So I'm gonna show you, there's a couple other things that are ready to harvest and I had no idea that we were already ready to harvest it. I have two different kinds of basil we're gonna plant. This is just a sweet basil. I don't know where I got this seed. This is another sweet Italian basil from the Dollar Tree. All I'm gonna do Kind of roughen up this soil a little bit. This one's already open, the one from Burpees. So we're going to start with that. I'm going to put a lot of seed down. I want a lot of basil this year if I can. If I can get it. Glad I have that in the ground. I'd rather have some basil seed. Hopefully those will come up as opposed to just weeds. I weeded all through here and I'm going to take my Dollar Tree basil I'm just going to plant it between these pepper plants and that way we can try to have something growing. Not all the beds may look pretty, but this one certainly is looking pretty. I've gotten all the weeds out of it and we have the flowers and pepper plants. Really happy with it. 
Now we're gonna go ahead to harvest something I had no idea was ready until I just glanced up. And I was like, oh my goodness. I'm gonna trellis up my cucumber plant. I looked down and look what I see. That is crazy. Who knew that green beans were ready? And there's a ton of them. I had completely given up hope on these green beans because there were so many weeds in here. I came in here and weeded and I think they're gonna produce just fine. And I did not bring a basket out here. I don't know when I'll ever learn. Look at what I just found, a cucumber. Look at that, I had no idea cucumbers were ready. So we're gonna harvest that in just a minute. There are so many baby green beans on here, plus what I'm harvesting right now. This is crazy. Crazy, I had no idea. My life is about to get a little bit crazier with all this beautiful harvest that's coming. I could probably let this cucumber go another day or two, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab it right now. When you don't bring a basket into the garden and you use a pot to bring your produce back inside. I'm gonna wash all this before we use it. So this is what our harvest basket is, this old pot we grew garlic in. When I just looked up from harvesting the parsley, our Rebecca is blooming and I am just blown away with these blooms look at all of them and there's so many more coming wow what a beauty oh my goodness friends look at this oh do you know what that is these are ground cherries and you know they're ready to harvest when they fall off the plant on the ground that's why they're called ground cherries oh, there's another one we're gonna try these together. I didn't know if this experiment was gonna work. So they're a little fruit in a husk, just like a tomatillo. That one was a little underripe. This one looks a little riper. Mmm. Oh, that one's not ripe at all. That is amazing. I just see all the weeds in this bed. A little depressing but how can you be super depressed when we're actually getting an abundance even with even with weeds there's so many more things I want to show you but I need to do a full garden tour because it's getting toward the end of July and I haven't done one and things are happening things are happening it looks like we have another Rebecca that's growing a couple weeds I'm gonna pull those What I need to do now is put blinders on. I need to be grateful and blessed with what has come out of this garden because I feel that so much. So grateful and I need to go inside, get ready to pack up to go up to the house to help Josh because he's up there. He's been working up there for hours now at this point and it's time for me to go help him. One more thing though before we head out of the garden. Friends, our snapdragons, we started from seed together, are blooming. And if these are not the prettiest snapdragons you have, ever have seen, oh, friends, look! There are peppers growing in the, oh my, oh my gosh, look at all the peppers on this plant. Oh my goodness, I don't even know what kind of peppers these are. I have no idea, but I'm grateful for them. Wow, what a blessing. I am so, so grateful for that. My heart is full, my heart is full. Okay, I am gonna grab one onion though because we're gonna make dinner tonight together, I think. And we might as well use our homegrown onions. I'm gonna pull this. And then on accident pulled up one earlier. So we're gonna take that one inside too. <laughs> These are our harvest baskets today. So we're gonna bring this inside 
and we're gonna make dinner out of this tonight. Here is today's harvest. Two onions, two heads of garlic. Now these are very moist, and so I'm gonna bring these inside and we're gonna use these uh, for dinner tonight and then for, you know, I'm obviously not gonna use a whole head of garlic for dinner tonight. We have a ton of lemon basil, parsley, and green beans. I do need to wash those. And just regular basil. Oh, that looks like at least a little bit bad. And then we have a cucumber and a zucchini. I have my dehydrator trays out. I'm gonna go ahead and get all the basil and parsley on the dehydrator trays so those can be dehydrating and they don't go bad. This is one thing that I really want to work on making sure that I do not waste or uh, miss out on the herb harvest. I did miss out a little bit on the cilantro harvest. I mean, I used a ton of it fresh, but I did not preserve any of it. I am gonna harvest the seeds of the, of the cilantro. So we're gonna have coriander as a spice, but I do not, I do not wanna miss out on the parsley and basil harvest. So in the dehydrator, these go. Finally, we are in the car. <laughs> it is 12.46 right now, and I thought we would have been gone about two hours ago. <laughs> I totally forgot that I had to write a recipe for the video that went out today, so I sat down and I hadn't made, I hadn't done a bunch of computer work that I had to do in order to get that video ready. So I sat down and then I got sucked into that, which is fine, it needed to be done. I was either gonna do it down here or up at the new house, but up the new house, the internet, has been a little bit iffy, but Josh texted me actually and said he has the Wi-Fi set up. Yes. And so I'm finally getting ready to head up there. I am getting hungry and I had Josh pack um, lunch. We found a good rhythm that it works well to eat like breakfast and lunch up there, but it's not really working to eat dinner up there. Um, so, I will come down here and I do think I need to stop to the store. My grocery shopping has been a little bit um, different since this whole craziness of remodeling and getting ready to move and all the things. And so I've been doing like really small grocery shopping trips about once a week and that's been working really well. I have no idea if this is gonna change the way I grocery shop long term or what, but it's been nice not having to manage as much produce. But now produce is coming in from the garden so I really don't have to buy that probably at all starting today. Now the zucchinis are coming in. We'll have a lot of zucchini. And I wanted to give an update on the website since I just worked on writing a recipe. Josh is a computer programmer and he was building me a new website that's gonna be printable, it's gonna be beautiful, all the things, but clearly he has not had time to do that between remodeling and all of his you know, nine to five job that he works. So we did hire one of his friends who is working on the new website that will soon, well, I don't know when, but eventually it will be ready and it'll have a printable button and it's gonna be a lot prettier. We now have a logo and a theme of what everything's gonna look like on there. So it's gonna be really pretty. I just wanted to give an update on that. I know that that's really annoying that you can't print a recipe, but soon, soon, hopefully that will be a thing. And as soon as we get moved in and settled, then Josh will be able to manage the website again. But just for now, we realized that was something that he wasn't worked on for over three months just because of how life has happened. And so we needed to get a little bit of extra help. And it's really great that we were able to enlist the help of his friend. So let's go up to the new house. I decided to run to the store on the way up to the new house and I'll just bring this home with us. Half gallon of milk, a half or a quart of just plain non-fat yogurt, whole milk, some cheddar cheese, bananas, and cherry tomatoes for dinner tonight. So I've been up here for about four hours now and I've been sitting out there with a blanket because it's kind of cool today. It's not even, I don't even think. What it's 75. It's 75. <laughs> and so I had a blanket because I was sitting in the shade so I could work on my laptop. I got a ton of computer work done. We're making great progress on that. So now I've got all my work done so I can go into this weekend focusing on Josh or focusing on helping Josh, I should say. I was up here, I don't even know what day it was, and the electricians came out. We had one of the outlets put into the floor here, and this was actually here, so I shouldn't say we had one of these ones put in the floor. Both of those were terminated, 
but we had them replace what they had here before was this in the floor and it was like this so they weren't even lined up and if you ever wanted to plug something into the floor when this was out the plugs were about two inches or inch and a half underneath the flooring and it was an open gap so we had the electricians go ahead and put this here so it just looks a lot nicer instead of it looking kind of like cattywampus and then if you take this off to plug something in it's just going to look nice and clean and finished but what we had done was the switches are now where they go and since they were out they did go ahead and put the new style in which is nice those look a lot better that's what we're going to replace all these with but josh and i are going to do that work all the wiring in this wall is now completely dead the electricians, they were worried about the wall falling over when they were cutting into it. So they put this ladder there just in case, which I thought was kind of funny because this wall is super, super wobbly. I'm really excited because this weekend, my sister-in-law is going to help. She's going to come up here and help with some random projects around the house on Sunday. My brother-in-law is going to come help and we're going to take this down. Josh and I probably could do this by ourselves because it's not gonna be hard to take down, except the fact that it's gonna be heavy, so we need a little bit more muscle, just to make sure that when it comes down, it will come down easily, or it's not gonna do any damage or anything. So, oh, and Josh got this done. He's been working on this while I was working on my computer. He finished out this door. We were gonna put like a style or something, it's actually called a rail, a style is one that goes vertical and a rail is one that goes horizontal, but we decided we kind of just like the nice clean look because I think eventually down the road, we're gonna end up putting Wayne's coating around this entire room. But that's something we're gonna do down the road when probably we ever redo the floors, which will be quite some time because the floors are in good condition. They are just laminate and long, long, long term, we would prefer them to be hardwood. They aesthetically are beautiful. They're a really good quality laminate. They look nice. Just eventually we would prefer kind of like natural materials. But until then, we're super happy with the progress. He went ahead and he finished it in the kitchen as well. And so this part of the house, except for the half bath, is completely done with trim. He got the front door done. And that's looking really nice. He is making great progress, and I think he's gonna be able to get it completely done before the painters come next week. So there are two phases to the trim and paint. So Josh, by this weekend, should have all the trim done in the main part of the house. And then we're gonna have it painted, we're gonna move in, and then we are waiting on doors for the rest of the house. So we ordered doors and they were gonna take six to eight weeks to come and we wanted to move in before six to eight weeks. So what's gonna happen is once we move in, probably about four weeks after that, the doors will be here. And in that bonus room, those two bedrooms and bathroom that we ripped the carpet out, those doors will be installed up there because we're getting all new doors up there. And there are gonna be some new doors down here, but once those doors are installed, Josh will be able to finish the trim work because he can't do the trim work if there's no doors. And then the painters will come and paint that bonus area. We'll have the carpet installed and then we'll be able to put furniture and things up there. So it's kind of like phase one and phase two, but we're almost, we're, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel of this phase one. So it's pretty exciting. So I really appreciate Josh taking his time off work to come and work. This is not a relaxing thing to have to take time off from your day job to come and work, but I think in the end, it's gonna be a good thing and I really appreciate his efforts. Another thing I did in here the other day when we were up here is I removed all the caulking that was around this bathtub. It was very, very stained and discolored and it was not even attached to the tub. I said it correctly. I know. Josh is laughing. And, and so I, I scraped all that off and you can see down there it has gotten like moldy. So I removed all of that and once we put the new caulking in, it's gonna look so much nicer and cleaner. And this is the room, this is the bathroom that Josh is working on right now. This window here he's doing. And this is a very complicated area to do because of the beadboard, which I really like the beadboard and I wanna keep it. 
So he has to create little, what are called rabbits, around where the trim comes in to make room for the beadboard. I was gonna get going on nail hole filling, but I think what I need to do is go home and do some meal prep because I haven't done any meal prep for this weekend. So we're gonna go do that together. And before I do that, I'm gonna go get one more paint sample. One more. We have gone from wanting this color to now thinking we want this color, but Josh really likes that color up there. That one is just a sticky thing. It's not an actual paint sample. I'm not comfortable saying I want a color for the whole house without actually getting a sample. So I'm gonna go run and get that sample, and then we're gonna go do some breakfast prep, make dinner for tonight, and I think that that'll be good. We're home, and I'm gonna get going on dinner. I have white rice in our Instapot, and I'm gonna get this going. I decided not to go to Sherwin-Williams and get another paint sample. I think we decided on accessible beige. If you're tired about hearing about paint, I'm tired about hearing about paint. I think that's what we decided. I think we thought that if we go to get more samples, we're just gonna muddy the water again. And we sat there and talked about it for about 20 minutes. I think that's what we're gonna go with. Don't hold me to it, because it might be different. So we're gonna get the veggies chopped up. This is one of my favorite summer meals. Normally I don't make it until the tomatoes and the zucchini are in. I just made this up randomly. It tastes so good. I did have to go buy those tomatoes and I just couldn't wait any longer since we have this beautiful zucchini ready to cook for dinner tonight. This is such an easy dinner. I already washed the onions and the garlic. They had legitimate dirt on them and real food comes dirty and I'm totally okay with that. So I'm gonna dice up these two onions and I'm gonna get the stove turned on so it can start heating up while we prep some of these veggies. These are Walla Walla onions, which are a sweet onion. And then we have our garlic. This was the one that was left in the ground. I did rinse it because it was pretty dirty. The paper on these is pretty thin. I'm gonna do, what is that, six heads of garlic, or six cloves of garlic. The garlic's peeled, so I'm just gonna give it kind of a rough chop. This does not need to be perfect. And then I do wanna get this meat cut real quick, so I'm gonna start this dinner with this, these sausages. For this recipe, it's not really a recipe, it's just throw things in the pan, whatever you have. You can use whatever kind of meat you want, but I really like these pineapple sausages. These are, I think they're Adele. I don't have the, the label on here. I get them at Costco and they're so good. They are sweet and they add kind of a sweetness and we kind of make like a broth slash sauce that goes over the rice with this and this is what makes that so good. I'm gonna cut them in half. They're still a little bit frozen. I took them out of the refrigerator or out of the freezer this morning. And then I'm gonna cut them in half rounds. Just kind of bite size. Gonna add some butter. You could add oil, whatever you want. I just grabbed butter because I thought the flavor would be good. If I can get the paper off of it. This pan might have been a little hot because now I've just made brown butter. But that's okay. I'm gonna take it off the heat a little bit so we can add our sausage. And we're gonna brown those sausages. While the sausage is browning, I'm gonna cut up our zucchini. And I'm gonna dice this into cubes. This is probably a little bit more mature than ideally we would harvest. So I'm gonna cut a little bit of some of these seeds out and the chickens are really gonna enjoy that. I'm gonna cut this about the same size as we cut those sausages. We're gonna cut up the whole thing. Our sausages are still browning, so I'm gonna shred up some sharp cheddar cheese. I like these sausages to get some good color on them, like that. 
it kind of caramelizes the sugars in them and they just get so yummy and flavorful. To dice the cherry tomatoes, I'm not actually gonna dice them. I said dice, but I'm gonna cut them in half. I'm actually gonna cut our cherry tomatoes in quarters. The liquid that comes out of the zucchini and the onions and the tomatoes kind of makes like a broth and turns into the most wonderful sauce that goes over the rice. And most of the flavor is coming from our sausages and it's just so incredibly delicious. And this dinner takes less than 10 minutes to put together. I am gonna preheat the oven because I finished this in the oven to 400. All right, this has quite a bit of color to it. So now we're gonna go ahead and add our onions and saute those for a minute. There's some sticking on the bottom of this pan. That's what we want. And these onions are gonna help release that stickage. They're gonna release a little bit of moisture. So we need to add a little bit of salt. Our onions are nice and translucent. So we're gonna add our garlic. We're gonna cook that for about a minute. We're gonna add our zucchini. And we're gonna add a lot of black pepper. Our rice is done. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our tomatoes on here. And I kind of just sprinkle those on the top. And I want to season these tomatoes, so I'm going to add just a little bit of salt on top. And some more pepper. We're going to top this with our cheese. You could use whatever kind of cheese you want. I just turned the stove off. We're going to put this in our 400 degree oven. Josh just texted me and asked me if I would make him some chocolate chip cookies, which I made these last week. So I can just stick those in the oven along with dinner. And then I also just whipped up a blueberry baked oatmeal for him for breakfast. So I'm gonna throw this in the oven and he can enjoy this tomorrow and throughout the week. So I have the bottom oven preheated for our baked oatmeal. Dinner, dessert, and lunches because we'll have enough for leftovers, and breakfast is taken care of. I'm gonna go do some chicken chores, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like when it all comes out of the oven. I forgot I had the top oven at 400 degrees, the bottom oven at 350, so the chocolate chip cookies are a little bit browner than ideal, but let me tell you, they're still gonna taste great. They're brown butter chocolate chip cookies. I can link the recipe. So but they would have been a little bit better if I did not overbake them, but that's okay. Let's take a look at that. Oh, see, that is done. Let me pull it out and show you. Oh yeah, so yummy. I'm so excited to eat this. I haven't had this since last summer. It's so simple, but so, so delicious. Sorry if you can hear my dishwasher. I got my dishwasher going, but do you see all that kind of broth in there? There was no added liquid. That's just from the onions and the zucchini and the tomatoes. And that is exactly what I want because what I like to do is pour that sauce over our beautifully cooked rice. And let me tell you friends, it is so simple, super simple ingredients, yet so, so delicious. I'm gonna dish it up and kind of show you. It's really, really good with Parmesan cheese too. I just don't have any right now and that's okay. And I pour just some of that broth over the rice. And that's our dinner. Absolutely delicious. Well, friends, yet another busy day on the homestead. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for hanging out with me today. If you guys enjoyed this, I can post a couple more videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. It is 7.09, so I'm hoping Josh comes down pretty soon so that he can relax, rest, and then we're gonna be back up there tomorrow morning.